Hi, it's Joy, and today I'm going to be watching House of the Dragon, Season 1, Episode 7, Driftmark. I am a week late to watching this, I'm so sorry, I had a mix-up with ordering my medication and my brain was going through it lots of week, but I am back, I'm gonna watch episodes 7 and 8, 8 and 9, 6 and 7, <laughs> so sorry, I'm losing my mind, 7 and 8 back to back, um, to right now they will be edited and up as soon as I can get them edited and up, um, I don't want to overtax my CFS, ME, etc. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm wearing green and black to show that I support both. I have yet, yeah, I don't have a great preference either way. I will be criticizing both sides as they come. Um, you can't really tell this is green, but I don't really own many things that are green. And I suddenly remember I have this green dress that I hadn't worn in forever. So, yes, there we go. Um, I will say that I know in my reactions, I have been more, you know, I have been like speaking in favor of Alison and being more critical of Rhaenyra. And that is because in my perusal of the internet, um, when I tend to see people hating on Alison, just blanket hating, and being like worshipping Rhaenyra, and I think they are both such fascinating, wonderful characters, I support them both, but I think Alison is not as bad as she's been made out to be, or at least she's more understandable than she's been made out to be, and Rhaenyra is playing with fire and being a bit more foolish than people are making out to be, so I kind of highlight those a little bit more, but regardless, I have yet to fully settle on either Team Green or Team Black. Um, I do think Rhaenyra is playing with freaking fire and I do not know what happens in this episode but I just I know someone that watches this was like oh my god and I had to wait a week to watch it so yeah anyway ramble over mind that you can find the unedited version of this reaction on my patreon and let's go true born eh what happened to her dragon? Is it doing okay after killing her? You need to start winning people to your side, and not just your uncle. Use a kind word. I have an equal claim to sympathy. Jace. Yeah. Harry and Morning Lord Lionel and Sahara. Yeah. Sweet oh, Rhaenyra. Everyone knows they are not even remotely Valarian children. I'm sorry. Okay, I love you. And I I personally think you should be queen, but you know, this is Westeros, this is not how things work, and you clearly had bastard children, so you're making a mockery of their bloodlines and everything nonsense that's going on in Westeros. Does she feel bad? She didn't know he was going to kill his own family. She's an idiot. She's your future queen. Fucking hell. Incest are us. I mean, Viserys' parents were siblings, right? And he's a cousin of Emma. Like, I just... Targaryens. I know you need to keep your iconic look, but think Actually, about this. <laughs> Awkward children. Their innocence in all of this. From the Lord Driftmark, it means everyone's dead. Oh, all these children. Well, it is cruel, the world of Westeros, especially so. These children are inheriting a fucking mess. Retrieve your patron. Oof. Brother. Making a scene. Do you not think your son is acting as he should? Can a man not grieve his own sister however he wants to? Your girls are the very image of their mother. Quite. And an anguish. Unlike your grandsons and their father. There's a place for you in my court. That's something you should need. I need nothing. I killed my first wife myself. Okay, my second wife killed herself because she was dying in childbirth. No matter how fat the leech grows, it always wants for another meal. Spoken by one leech to another. I'm going to bed, Emma. Shall I see after Queen Alice in your place? <sighs> yes. No, Sir Harold. Fucking hell, Otto. I get that he's... But all of these parents were like, my son is not who I want him to be. They're not acting the way I want them to be. Maybe it's the crippling weight of responsibility you're thrusting on them at a young age. Where are you going? I know he wants a dragon, but surely 
her daughter would have the first right to it. So I do not know how dragon inheritance works in Westeros. Lena needed our maesters. Didn't help Queen Emma. It's not justice for your wife that drives you to your own ambition. Both can be true. Throne, if not pure. Everyone in this show is out for their own pride to a degree, their own ambitions. Some of those ambitions are just pass through Lena's line to Baylor. Rhaenyra's children are not of your blood. It's very obvious. But Lena's are. I wish we could we need to protect those boys, my god. They are her legacy. It remembers names. True. I mean, that is such an interesting point, isn't it? Do you value your blood children over the name? Now, in the modern context, adoption, wonderful thing. Um, step parenting and then adopting the children, great. Um, from a Westeros point of view, that is quite an interesting line because the whole concept in the show is that he wants his blood on the throne. And so now he's like, I want my name on the throne. But your name is never going to... I mean, I know he wants his name, Driftmark. Your name is never going to be on the throne because they're both going to become... Targaryens and in the history books it's going to say everybody in there were rumors going around that the boys looked nothing like their father but they looked exactly like this man that spent a lot of time with their mother you know the history books will say Valarians they'll always be this shadow over their names I mean we have rumors about various English kings and people say oh you know he was the son of an archer now there is zero credibility to that in this case there is credibility it would be a there'd be an asterisk next to their names in the book but then i also respect him for wanting to protect the boys if that is he genuinely a part of why he's wanting to do this because they are innocents they do not deserve any of this on their heads um but at the same time you could see her frustration of our little girl is dead and we can honor her we can give her children an inheritance and safety in that way instead of these boys who make a laughing stock of the great marriage we made and the whole you like you know Yes, obviously this is an interesting dynamic because Lenor is fully aware of what is going on. It's not like he's being cuckolded and has no idea. He's fully aware that these aren't his children and he's quite content that he doesn't have to sleep with a woman to get children. Um, so it's not like in that sense the woman laughing at them or the marriage being made a mockery. But their house, there will be snide comments made about them. Because, you know, they thought they were going to get the throne and now the house strong is going to have the throne. It's that kind of thing. And it's interesting as well because blood is so important. Because Otto Hightower, the Hightowers are not going to have the throne. If he gets his way and Aegon is crowned, my god, Aegon would need to change. But if an Aegon is crowned and he becomes Aegon the second, third, fourth, I don't know, and then his children inherit and his children inherit, within a few generations, I mean, initially he wants to marry him to his sister. Just incest our us, why? I get it, they're Targaryens. Um, but by the time he dies, Otto dies, and then Alicent dies, their children would just be like, oh yeah, our grandmother was Hightower, wasn't she? The, the Hightowers will always know that they married into the family and their kids were on the throne, but it's a bloodline he's desperate to have on the throne. But it's only his blood that will remain on the throne if he gets his way, because the name will no longer have anything to do with the throne as soon as Alison dies. So it's kind of, it's just really interesting which way you go with this. And I think within Westeros itself, blood is what matters. Blood is why they do these things. And... I feel like it's almost, is it more prideful to want the name to be all that matters because it's his name and it gets passed on? Would it be more prideful to the other way? It's interesting. But maybe you could discuss this with your wife instead of deciding. Yes, well that has been my lot since my father named me heir. He has Rhaenyra and I love you, but you've also put in approximately zero effort to try and like secure allegiances or to prove to people. I mean, again, she shouldn't have to prove to people, but in the UK they only made it the like the law here only changed in our life my lifetime so that a, a girl could inherit above a brother if she was born first you know if the queen had had an older brother or even sorry if the queen had, had a younger brother he would have been king on the throne and would have just died I don't, know, I don't know if he would have just died i mean liz trust but <laughs> like rhaenyra i i do as a viewer support your claim to the throne especially when aegon looks like such a little shit but at the same time, within Westeros, we had the Great Council. The Great Council said, women, no, men, yes. You need to be doing more than just making your marriage look good to prove to people that you are capable of having the throne and that their stupid prejudices are just that. 
There was no joy in it. It doesn't have to be to conceive, unfortunately. I do not believe Alicent capable of cold murder. She wasn't. You abandoned me. I spared you. You were a child. Yes. Yes, I was a child. And you groomed her. My life became without you. Brynira, you were a child and he was grooming you. The age difference alone makes this unbearable. If he's not your uncle. We were happy enough. I know people love them together. And I'm just like, she was like 15, 16 at the most. And he was a grown man. In his 30s, most like. If not 40s. I don't know how old he's supposed to be. I don't know how old anyone is supposed to be in this show unless they tell me. And he took her to a brothel. And it's just... The age difference alone. Even if he wasn't her uncle. I can't get behind this. At least if they have an affair, the children will look closer to the right... Valyrian complexion. They'll have the right hair. Just not the right skin colour. Though he groomed her. I'm sorry. As a little girl, you wouldn't have thought, oh yeah, I'm going to go check up with my uncle. I know Targaryens are more... They taught to expect incestuous marriages and stuff. I just, I can't, I can't enjoy these scenes, okay? I don't, I don't, don't ship it. I'm happier that they are like acting on this more when she's at least grown, but I find their portrayal of Damon really, really interesting because in some ways, all I basically knew about this show was the in the book Alison is absolutely awful and then the book Damon is pretty awful as well like they're, they're both awful um Alison I thought a lot about in this show she may well get there but right now I think where she started off she was a victim first and foremost and Damon was just a bit of man who groomed his niece um but the thing like in so many ways he's been better than you might have thought he seems a somewhat decent father he was he took himself away from the politics and tried to make a life elsewhere he was good to his wife he didn't say i'll just go cut her open for the kid like Viserys did but on the flip side he bashed his wife's head in with a rock and i very much struggle to like a man that does that how does one claim a dragon he keeps going into the dragon pit Definitely doesn't help that he was being bullied by his brother and his cousins for... Or his nephews, even. It's brave. And foolish. I'd like to be your friend, please. And probably Lena's daughter, who doesn't have a dragon, should get the dragon, if anyone. Fuck, child. He's going for it. I don't know that your aunt, cousin's, I don't know the kind of cousin's funeral was the best place to get a dragon, but they haven't really established what the legal, where, is it just first come first served or is this going to be a huge slight because he did it at the night of the funeral and didn't let whichever girl it was that doesn't have one. Quite a big step to go from no dragon to flying a ginormous dragon. I guess the dragons like having riders. Little pet that can fly around sometimes. My mother's dead. Vega has a new rider now. She was mine to claim. Then you should have claimed her. Maybe your cousins can find you a pig to ride. It would suit you. The night of the funeral was not the time for this. Fucking hell. Come at me again and I'll feed you to my dragon. Children! First blood shed by the babes. Fucking hell, children! You will die screaming in flames just as your father did! Fucking hell! All strong. Fucking hell. Such a thing to happen. Fucking hell. So right, okay. <laughs> Trying to untangle the web of what just happened before whatever the fuck is about to happen in the next 25 minutes. Um obviously Eamon was wrong to take the dragon. 
because it by rights should have been the daughter of the original writer. I do think it was initially I was going to be like I do think you know his brother and his cousins have been bullying him with the pig and everything and he felt a lot of pressure to have a dragon and so maybe that's why he did it but then when he came out with the whole <laughs> you'll die screaming like your father that that was when I was suddenly like I name and you have lost me <laughs> I was ready to be like I do not agree with what he did but I'm not going to condemn him too harshly and then he came out with the like I'm going to bash this child's head in with a rock and be really horrible to him um yeah definitely you can see that the uh, the aggression of their parents is seeping down I find it really interesting that the little girls went and got their cousins and not their grandfather their grandmother you know an adult would have been far better to deal with this this would not have happened if they had done that but no, you can definitely see the next generation that not only shed the first blood, but they are going to be shedding a lot more. Who did this? They attacked me! He attacked Baylor! Oh, oh, it was a squabble between children with fucking knives! Her son has been maimed. Her son is responsible. It was a regrettable accident. There's accident. more to the story, because Alison. Because has brought a blade to the ambush. He meant to kill my son. It was my sons who were attacked and forced to defend themselves. Both are true. Vile insults were levied against them. What insults? Are you going to say them in front of the whole court? The legitimacy of my son's birth was must be sharply questioned so we might learn where he heard such slanders. Fuck, Rhaenyra did not come. An insult. My when son he... has lost an eye. Mm -hmm. I can see where they're both coming from. Rhaenyra is finally stepping up to play far too late in my opinion and like not far too late, obviously she used to do it now, but I wish she'd done it sooner and I don't know, I feel like, of course if she was a freaking child, or if only just, if only everyone around them had handled things differently. Um, oh, just the fight between the kids and themselves is so interesting because it started off with the dragon, but then why did the girls go and get their cousin and why did the cousin bring a blade? Who did they, like, admittedly he didn't draw the blade until the rock came out. So that puts Eamon more in, like, you know, you're like, he was to blame, then they were to blame, then he was to blame, then they were to blame. I do think Eamon was the worst one in that fight, but there were also five, four of them, I can count, against him. But yeah, he was still, far, he's the oldest, the biggest, the worst. But at the same time, he has now lost an eye, so maybe you could be, like, punishment dealt. Just, what's happening? Well, your king demands an answer. Who spoke these lies to you? But they're not lies, Viserys. Yep. She sort of said them to you as well, Viserys. It's not a shock. She shouldn't have been saying it to the children. It was Uncle. <sighs> Me. Protecting his mother. Where did you hear such calumnies? Agon! Tell me the truth of it! Was it Egon? I mean, we've seen... We've not seen Alison say it to either of them. I ima I can't imagine her having yet said it to Eamon because he's young. I could have seen her saying it to him and potentially him passing it on. But I also just think everyone at court is seeing this. And yes, they wouldn't be intentionally... Alison may well be saying it to her children to get them in because she's perpetuating the abuse her father put on her and to her children. And I don't agree with it, but I understand where it's coming from. But like... Every single person at your court has at one point or another said or at fucking least thought those boys are not Lanors. We know, Father. Fuck. Everyone. Knows. Yep. Just look at them. I want to protect these babies. They don't deserve a fucking word of this. But it's true. And Viserys' blind eye called this. I don't know what he could have done in particular. He could have done a fucking lot. Basically, my ideal world would have been if we could flash back episode one. Viserys chooses to marry a woman who is past childbearing age, but who's of an influential house. And they focus on Rhaenyra's education, finishing off to be a perfect queen. They focus on making sure the realm can see her as the perfect queen. None of this would be happening. <sighs> Now make your apologies and show goodwill to one another. Your father, your grandsire, your king demands it! Viserys, you have been too weak and passive for too long. 
You let things bubble to this point. No, because it's been taken. What would you have me do? There is a debt to be paid. Alison, what are you doing? I shall have one of her son's eyes in return. Alison. My dear wife. He is your son, Sarah. Your blood. I, I think she just wants somebody to actually step up and protect her and her kids. You know, the mat, like, I do not agree with Tarnish demanding the eye. But I think she just wants more than, like, nothing to happen when Rhaenyra has, in her eyes, I think her father's influence has made her view everything Rhaenyra does through a much harsher light than the truth of everything Rhaenyra does. But Rhaenyra has broken every single custom and law of Westeros, essentially. I mean, not every single one. Um, fucking hell. If the king will not seek justice, the queen will. Alicent, the don't. Kristen, bring me the Eye of Lucerus Velaryon. Jesus fucking Christ. You can choose which eye to keep a As your protector, my queen. I mean, she's acting out of anger and rage. She's not in her right mind right now. Anyone whose tongue dares to question the birth of Princess Rhaenyra's sons should have it removed. He's siding with Rhaenyra over Alison. As far as Alison is looking at this, I can see it from her point of view. Rhaenyra never gets any kind of punishment. Rhaenyra never suffers. Rhaenyra never gets held to account for her actions. Do I agree with... No, I think, you know, in this moment she is in the wrong. And I want to highlight that, that like, I know I speak up Alison and I put down Rhaenyra and that is not entirely my intention and I'm trying to be better in this episode because my goal is more... I love both of these women. <laughs> I can see where they both come from. I think Rhaenyra is making a lot of really dumb choices and because of her position and her privilege she's getting away with them. She's beginning to step up. I think some of her, the way she approached this situation, she's doing better at it. Maybe it's age, I don't know. And I can also think that Alison has been a pawn in other people's games. She's been used and just used and abused and made to suffer and suffer and suffer and I don't agree with her demanding a child's eye ever. Um, you can see why she's been driven to this point and it is a point where just saying anybody and looking straight at her who questions the prince's legitimacy will lose their tongue they are very clearly bastards and i'm so sorry i want those boys to live happy long fulfilled lives i want no harm upon those two little babies but they are not in line they should not be in line for the throne they should be declared i mean i don't know how they could fucking be declared illegitimate at this point because of the shame of it all but for viserys to just claim I imagine, I mean, I know that there was a little bit of a furore because I think in the books, or was it like, oh, there was some, or was it somebody who wrote some graphic novel, I don't know, somebody somewhere was going like, oh, George R. R. Martin didn't write any of these noble houses to be black. And so maybe in the book, the only difference is their hair is darker. But then when every single person, like, in your family is of, has white hair and you have dark hair, it's just obvious. But in this show in particular, it is mind-dumbingly obvious that none of these children belong to Lainor biologically and that is what matters in this world and it's not only that it's the brothel incident where the king you know punished Otto for questioning Rhaenyra questioning the idea that Rhaenyra would do that and would go to a brothel and do stuff with her uncle and then sending her birth control the next day it looks to Alison like Rhaenyra can do whatever she wants it gets covered up she gets away with it and Alison suffers the consequences um and I don't like what it's doing to Alison. I don't like how it's warping her sense of self and her the way she sees the world. It's been quite painful to watch it happen to be honest, to watch her from an innocent girl trying to please her father, you know, with her nail and everything, just anxious to the point of harming herself to this. But you can understand why she's here right now, why she's at breaking point. You know, she kind of thought Lord Fuckface Strong, the current Lord of Harrenhal, was maybe at least a, 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 a someone that was on her side, someone that would at least talk to her or listen to her. And even he has committed murder for his own personal gain and then ensnared her and threatened her children. You know, like, no one is on this woman's side right now. No, everyone is either using her, taking advantage of her, or making a mockery of every sacrifice she's ever made. It is no wonder she is reaching breaking point. And it breaks my heart. And it breaks my heart that she and Rhaenyra were so close at the beginning of all this. And in this episode I think Rhaenyra has handled this masterfully and I'm finally like you are playing the game Rhaenyra I wish no one had to but you're doing it I'm fucking stressed 
Awesome. She's a grieving mother. What have I done? But what was expected of me? Exactly. Forever upholding the kingdom. Will you pull out the all to do as you please? Alicent, let her go. Where is duty? Where she's, is sacrifice? This is why she's at breaking point. Do I agree with this right now? No. A thousand times no. But everyone around her has pushed Alison to this point. Trampled under your pretty foot again. Release the blade, Alison. Fuck. And now you take my son's fight. She's, she's reached breaking point. That is all. Fuck. Something you helped drive her to. I love you, Rhaenyra. But she snapped. I do not agree with a single thing Alison just did. Fuck no. But every word she said tells you why years of this suffering and abuse and of genuinely trying to do the right thing like yes maybe she clings to that i know um there's an excellent tiktoker i will if i remember i will link if i don't after i'm in the next episode who um she talks about in depth about westeros and things like that and you know old tower old town has like the high septon or whatever like it's very linked to the faith alison has done everything she can to be right and to do the right thing and in this moment she snapped and she broke and it hurts me to see it also hurts me to know that these two girls that loved each other so dearly are now this enemy but for Rhaenyra to be like now they see they're both I really honestly think at this point they're both viewing each other through the harshest lens and neither of them is actually the person they see do not warn me mother it was a fair exchange I may have lost an eye but I gained a dragon Jesus Christ this child scares me. The gossip speculating I've gone mad. All true. I disgrace myself. Years of abuse took that toll and she snapped. It was an ugly thing, I regret it. We play an ugly game. Also, he's a terrible father. And now, for the first time, I see that you have the determination to win it. She didn't want any of this. You see her for what she is. Honestly, the truth is, when Rhaenyra, if Rhaenyra were to, even if Alicent were to be like, yeah, no, Aegon's not going to contest for the throne. Rhaenyra, we bow to you. The kingdom wouldn't like it because they are so patriarchal and I, we don't have to agree with it. It is just factual that Westeros had the choice to have a queen, picked a king. Um, there would be some kind of uprising and war. And yes, it may be shit because Aegon looks like a little, acts like a little shit. Who knows what he's going to be when he grows up. Rhaenyra wasn't exactly her most shining self as a teenager brothel while visiting and whatnot um obviously as a girl it was viewed more harshly than Aegon's which is ridiculous and double standards and I do agree but you know he's young who knows what Aegon will be like when he grows up but regardless of whether he turns into a wonderful man or a terrible man the kingdom will be far happier with a bad king than a good queen um and we don't have to agree with it Rhaenyra should have spent these last 20 odd years or 15 10 years I don't know how long it's been proving that she was a worthy queen and that she was just as good and she didn't have to but she should have and I promise you, in time, you and I together will prevail. Also forced his daughter into this situation. And he's even admitted that he didn't think she had it in her. So he was like, I don't think you're suited to this game. I'm going to force your life to be held. No this isn't the world she wanted or the life she wanted and the children she wanted. Women called our sons bastards. Everyone says it. The commoners will speak of it in their minds. I will raise our sons to be princes of the realm. Lynn. You deserve better than what I have been. You both deserve better than the pressures this world has put on you. Husband. These are dangerous times. <sighs> Father pushed her back onto this path. The day will doubtless come when I require such a friend. Wait like I think the the shock and the horror once that wore off she may have acted differently tried to find a different way through it all but her father pushed her straight back onto the path so weird I know it's Targaryens 
Damon's conniving grooming all those years ago comes to fruition. You do still have a husband. It's your uncle. There's a big age gap between you. I don't think that's true, personally. Should not marry. I could see. You know, Damon bashed his own wife's head in. I could see that. But. Rhaenyra wouldn't kill Leon. You're all through terror. If the king isn't feared, he is powerless. Who's that he just killed? If you are to be a strong queen, you must cultivate love and respect, yes, but your subjects must fear you. Who let you in here? She's not been cultivating it either, that's the problem. And the realm will whisper that I was somehow responsible. Yeah. This is the the random guy Damon killed. Vrainera is finally seven episodes in, starting to pick game properly. You know the whole thing of like wanting them to love you. She's not tried to cultivate that love, and I think she would have been so capable of it because she is so lovable <laughs> in so many ways. Right, so he. They killed some random guy, right? That's who Damon, we saw Damon kill. Threw him in the fire, dressed in Lanel's clothes. And we're all cool with them killing a random guy because he was poor. Boys can mourn their father now, twice over. All I can think of is the reason Damon killed the random man was because he died. And Lane or didn't. And we're cool with random poor man dying because random poor man dying, he was poor. He was some insignificant guy. He can die. Him getting free and getting to live, I support. Feel sorry for the dude they had to kill though. <laughs> okay, holy shit, that was an episode and a half. Um, whoa. So, to start with the ending, um, the plan of how to fake Leonor's death, it was very cleverly done. Um, you know, fire once again. Doing what the Targaryens will it too. I will always feel sorry for the random servant person, lesser lord, whoever the fuck it was, that just had to have his neck snapped to get shoved in a fire because the rich people <laughs> needed him out of the way. That is the lot of the poor. Um, but I do, I was. I was trying to work out what the fuck was happening because I could see Damon killing Lainor. I couldn't see Rhaenyra doing it. But this idea of him getting to live a life of freedom away from the weight and the expectations because his own father, you know, we've not seen them interact a whole load of times, but obviously we saw them at the funeral and then we had the interaction between, um, what is, it's Corlys Velaryon, right? I keep thinking everyone's called Corlys. Um, Corlys and his wife, Rhaenys, um, where he was like, oh, our son will grow out of that. Um, clearly the fact that his son was, he, he wasn't everything he hoped he would be because this is a time of prejudice. Um, so for Lainor to get to live a life away from the weight and the expectation of his name, of this burden, with money so that they will be comfortable and happy, <laughs> it's nice to be rich, you know, that is a good ending for him. It's an interesting ending because him being alive does mean this is in bigamous marriage and I'm caught I get that it's also incest so incest coupled with bigamy maybe you know it's all in the game I know was it Aegon Targaryen married like multiple sisters or something because I know that thing Damon mentioned when he was like oh I might have that wife but I could have an extra wife um so maybe they'd claim that I don't know but that that is interesting um Lainor could always come back um I don't imagine he'll go off and have any like bastard children or whatever that could come back and cause a problem because he's not interested in that. But yeah, that is an interesting development. And I'm happy for him that he gets to be alive. Very sad for the random man Damon murdered. <laughs> but I'm happy for this solution that kind of made everybody happy and added to the thing of Rhaenyra being feared. Though I do question the fact that she was like, I won't be a tyrant. A good queen has to be loved. And they're like, and also feared. Rhaenyra keeps, I, I, lo I love you. The viewers love you. The people of Westeros know nothing about you. And the lords of Westeros, you know, from what I gathered, you were a girl who didn't go to events because you were sullen and shy. And I get why I support that. She was a child. To now a woman who's very clearly had bastard children. I mean, you're not really 
getting the support. Now I think the events of that night will help because she can use Alison snapping as an example of why that side is bad. Um, but Rhaenyra does need to continue to step it up and maybe this is a sign. I think maybe the stakes being made so very clear on that night really will help her step it up because it is her own future and her children's future at stake. The damning thing for all of this is the way every single fucking person has handled this, largely Viserys. Turning a blind eye to the fact that the children are bastards, turning a blind eye to the fact that fucking everybody in this court knows it. I mean in the pre in the previous episode Alicent was saying to his face stuff about how the you know oh th those children clearly I mean I don't think she outright said it but like she basically outright said it. He knows everyone is gonna think it. To look at them is to know it. Um, now there are ways you can handle that, there are ways as the king you can quiet the whispers, you can make it clear that you couldn't care less either way, you know whatever it is, ignoring it is not the answer. Similarly the the fact that he's been ignoring that people won't be happy with a queen, I made them swear it to me 10 years ago so it's all fine now, no that's not how it works. Um, it's naive to think a kingdom that once had the chance to choose the eldest grandchild as a girl and chose the you instead would now be cool with your daughter. Yes, maybe back if there were no sons, if you had not married Alison, if you had married someone too old to give you children or had simply married Alison and then been like, but you are a child, so I will, you know, well, we can have company with each other, but I will not force myself into your bed. And if there were no children of the marriage, maybe because she is his only daughter, they would have been okay with it. Um, that's kind of how we ended up with the Tudor queens was because they were the they were literally we reached a point where there were no men who were in line to the throne they were all gone um so in that instance yes they maybe would have picked her over Damon especially with Damon's reputation but the minute there are princes it doesn't matter what those princes are like particularly if they're like Aegon seems quite weak-willed I don't really we don't know him he drinks a lot he gets shouted at a lot um if he seems weak the lords would love that because a weak king and they that is an opportunity for the lords to enrich themselves. Um, so Viserys has handled this very very poorly. Um, I imagine his increasing sickness has not helped with that but that in a lot of ways is no excuse. The fact that he called Alison Emma is that a sign that his mind is slipping. Um, so I love that they gave Lainor his escape. I kind of wish they'd found somebody in a morgue or something, you know, <laughs> someone that was recently dead and then they could like give the family loads of some nice money and then use that body rather than just murdering somebody. Um, I, something that I do really enjoy about this is that no side is squeaky clean, neither side of this, whether you're green or black, and I'm trying to be both, you can't really tell this dress is green. Um, nobody is right, nobody has never committed a crime. Um, the, Perhaps the biggest instance of that was it was just the, the whole thing with the children was so interesting. I kind of love that they were the first ones to shed blood. Now obviously within that Aemond was first of all the one that took the dragon but I could kind of understand that one just him taking the dragon I'm not anything else because his whole life he's been kind of made to feel lesser than because he doesn't have a dragon. His brother and his cousins have teased him and bullied him about it, the pig being just the latest instance. He has on multiple occasions gone running into the dragon pit to try and get a dragon. You know, he he's very clearly been made to feel lesser because he does not have a dragon and there is a dragon out there, no one has that dragon, I'm going to take it. Um, you can definitely see he has got that entitled princeness about him of I'm a prince, I want, I take. But you could argue that Damon and Rhaenyra also have that about them because they are all entitled princes. Um, this is what the rich are like I'm afraid. So just him taking the dragon it took a lot of courage and I kind of feel like I get where he was coming from in that he's been made to feel lesser than both of his cousins and his brother because he does not have a dragon well now look at me I have a dragon. The thing that became inexcusable was you know hitting them. I mean admittedly I don't, I don't know one of the girls is called Bela and I cannot remember the other one's name but sort of charging at him a little bit out of anger and then him like whacking them when a they are girls and this is a society in mean, general very hit women but you know they're little than you they're, they they the children were all smaller than him he did they kind of charged at him and then he brought violence more than was necessary but then there, you know you could even argue that the fight reached a point where there were like four or three of him pinning him down while they hit him you know he was outnumbered but then he picks up the rock and there's a very small child involved and he's gonna like 
And then the time when Eamon, in my opinion, lost any degree of well, both sides are being as bad as each other, because I do think there was an element of that at points, was when he was like threatening to bash in this tiny child's head and saying, you'll die in burning, screaming like your father. Oh, he doesn't know he's a bastard, lol. You know, that that was when Eamon, you're like, okay, this has gone from being children's fucking stop it, you're being as bad as each other, to being, we gotta watch this boy. <laughs> I have concerns um and you know in that moment the serious it was the little one that's right he just he saw a bigger boy who just said some really mean things standing over his brother with a rock looking like he had the intention to use said rock picked up dagger used dagger um none of that was right really the girls when they saw someone had taken the dragon should have gone to find their father admittedly they would have failed because he was on the beach having a really nice time with their aunt cousin <laughs> but they should have gone and found Corliss and their grandmother they should have gone to find anybody you know an adult not children to deal with it because if a grown man had been stealing the dragon you're gonna be screwed they had no idea who had stolen the dragon um so it was just dumb kids being dumb kids bringing a knife because I feel like at that point Jocerys wanted to prove to his cousins that I'm a big strong king and I think probably a part of why he brought the knife and didn't then say let's go and awake an adult is because he is a child who's been hearing he knows he's a bastard and he's been hearing everybody doubting his legitimacy and his power and so he's like I need to prove myself and it all became a huge mess I would have if it wasn't for the whole rock and the like burn like your father ha ah, evil mess that we saw from him and brilliant acting by that child though um I would have said it was a case of both sides as bad as the the other, aimed more in the wrong, but you can understand they're kids. We get it. That was like a I'm scared of this boy. Um, as was the waiting to the end of the moment and then being like, Don't worry, mother, don't grieve for me. I got a dragon, that's better than an eye. Um also the fact that Aegon is betrothed to his sister, I just Targaryen's let's just widen the gene pool a little bit please um oh lord that that was a lot <laughs> i obviously don't approve of that the fact that aemon was like i'll do my duty <laughs> aemon scares me but i think it's really interesting because aemon is very young and he already is very astutely aware of the game they're all playing and i wonder if that comes from being the second son i wonder if that comes from being the more overlooked one because you're, he's not aegon the conqueror come again he's just done us just aemon yeah the other son you know in the similar way that daemon is daemon has acted out a lot and done a lot of sort of more scandalous things he's a lot more he's had to be a lot more savvy about the game i feel like aemon is kind of kind of becoming a daemon mark too um now the moment I thought was very interesting was he protected his mother he could have said mother told me that they're bastards but he said it was his brother now I honestly don't know who said what for all I know Eamon literally just heard somebody say it because like Aegon said everybody is saying this look at them they are bastards I mean I, I say this with nothing but love for those little baby boys and I hope they can be happy and have long fulfilled lives I'm stressed for every single child in this show um but he could have said it was his mother and there was a moment where I thought he was going to, but he didn't, and he said it was his brother. I think you definitely can see that Aemon is feeling that loyalty towards his mother. Children should not have to be looking after their parents that way, but no, literally nobody else in this show cares about us, and so I don't know. It's not good. Um, it was very interesting to kind of see these characters at this young age, um, to see what they are like. I'm very intrigued, because I think there's another time jump coming and they're going to be played by somebody else, and then it's kind of where we're at for the characters ages I don't know but I it was very interesting to see the way young Eamon's mind worked during all of that he was clearly in pain he was clearly scared but he still did his best to look out for his family and to kind of come up with answers that made the best made the best out of the terrible situation that he could and he was someone that went to his mother's side after all of it now I talk about this during I do I, I need to iterate I still love Rhaenyra and I still love Alison. I'm going to defend them both until the bitter end. And I say until the bitter end, that will be the bitter end will be when they do something I truly cannot defend them against. Um, now, obviously, 
I don't agree with trying to take a kid's eye. I do wonder what would have happened had Alison actually got her hand on said child and had knife if she could have actually done it because I think it's it's easier to order it to happen or to go there with the knife like you're gonna do it. it it's a lot more to then do it but I think really in this night we just saw a decade plus of being of Alison doing the right thing okay because from what we've seen up until this point she has not committed any crimes she has not done anything illegal she did not pursue the king i think in the book it is different i'm pretty sure in the book alison is older rhaenyra is child alison does pursue the king in the show alison was a girl doing what her father said being a dutiful girl by the laws of westeros by the ex expectations of westeros um the much older king was like <laughs> i'm gonna marry that one was that race gone fuck off i have my stick she has been married to this man and she has done everything she's been there for him she's looked after him when he's sick she's been a good queen and she has got literally nothing back you know yes i think with if otto hightower had caught the plague and died right after she'd been married to the king her life would be a lot better because she wouldn't necessarily she would have i think she and Rhaenyra may well have found their way back to each other um, because we kind of saw them beginning to do that. It was Otto that really put into Alison's head this thing of Rhaenyra will kill your children. And then Rhaenyra immediately did something that showed it's one law for Rhaenyra, another law for everybody else, and showed that Rhaenyra was not trusting Alison the way they maybe could have done. You know, it, it was very much Otto that kind of drove that dagger home and circumstances that pushed them apart of this patriarchal world that they live in. If you watch this show currently and hate either woman, you are not watching the show right or you're watching the show and the patriarchy is winning through you now that doesn't mean you have to be pro both of them that doesn't mean you have to have the same kind of stance i'm trying to have or i do have where i try and see things through both sides and where my sympathy is a little bit more with allison right now than with rainera just because rainera is doing better <laughs> she's she's thriving um because it very much is one law for rainera one law for the targaryens one law for the princes and one law for everybody else and allison has been miserable and alone you know we saw her as a little girl married to the king saying to Rhaenyra you know no I don't have anyone there's no one close I don't have um if people look at me and they see the queen no one looks at me and sees me and within days of that Rhaenyra had her father the one person that was Alison thought in her court though he was fucking using her but you know had him sent from the court and everything like that you know Rhaeny Alison has been desperately alone with these ideas in her head that her children are, could be in danger and then she sees that Rhaenyra as a princess breaks all convention to go for a night frolicking in a brothel with her uncle you know yes from a modern audience standpoint if you take the uncle and the age gap out those are my two issues with, Ray with Rhaenyra and Damon. the age gap is almost bigger than the uncle thing um <laughs> but she broke all laws of convention lied to alison's face about it swore on her mother's memory and the loss of both of their mothers that was something that alison has also you know, been through that i think she lied on her mother's memory it wasn't she just lied it was a big deal you know when alison was already struggling and you go from there and then she marries um and she just alison cannot know the truth of Rhaenyra and Laenor's relationship. Alison knows nothing about it. But to see her producing these children who are very clearly not Laenor's and saying, these kids, these bastards, they're going to have the Iron Throne, your children aren't, when by all rights and customs of Westeros they should, I understand why Alison reached this point and snapped. And I will try and tag it in both of these episodes, in both this reaction and the next one. Um, the Lady of Custody talk i think her name is on tiktok she is fantastic she does brilliant analysis of westeros in general um and she did a really interesting thing saying how when she read the book she did not like alison at all and she was 100 percent team black and watching the show she feels so much more for alison and is leaning far more towards team green and being more critical of the way team black are handling things because i think this is the first time alison fucked up um it's the first time she ever did anything that wasn't expected of her and right and of course she's been making snide comments she has been you know fuck's sake the bastards the people i don't approve of necessarily how she's been treating her children but it is a product of how she was raised and the world she's been thrust into um she's constantly living in this state of 
everything is on the line and Rhaenyra can do whatever she wants and she gets away with it. So of course in this moment she comes into this room, she sees her little baby boy, lost an eye, terrible wound. Your brain just doesn't think anymore. You are just like, my child has been hurt, someone has to pay. And when, you know, the immediate response of everybody in the room, it seems to her, including of Viserys, her husband, these children's father, is to be like, oh, Rhaenyra's right, whatever Rhaenyra says. I think because it wasn't an isolated incident, it seemed to her as yet another instance of Rhaenyra and her family can do whatever the fuck they want and Alison and hers suffer. That is why she snapped and that is why she broke. So I do not agree with it. I do not agree with her taking a knife and charging at a child. I will never agree with that. But it purely and simply was the example of, of someone that has been pushed to the end of their tether and who snapped. And it frightens me because from here, I feel like she's at a place where she could go realise that, like, at the end of the day, playing this game isn't worth it or there are better ways to do it or whatever. And then Otto Hightower sneaked his way in there and was like, oh, no, don't feel bad. I love seeing that side of you. I just got to play the game more sneakily. <sighs> But at the same time, Rhaenyra and Daemon are off murdering random people to cover up Lena's fake death. Like, they're not great either. Um, so it was a very heart-wrenching scene to watch because, you know, when Alicent said uh, that you take everything and you trample it under your pretty foot or whatever, you know, you get everything and you take everything from me and you trample on it, that's how she's been feeling for the last 10 years. Alone, miserable, seeing... Rhaenyra defy everything that's expected of them, everything that Alice and herself has had to suffer through, and get away with it and face no consequences. And it's destroying her. And her father being back is awful, because God knows what he's going to inspire, and having a little Mr. Strong coming along, snaking around. But at the same point, Rhaenyra has not allied herself with Damon. So I think Damon is capable of bashing his own wife's head in and murdering random people to cover up a different murder. So, like, Damon groomed his daughter. Oh, I can't speak. So basically my heart is broken for Alison. I am worried, like yes, there is definitely a chance she could go to a place and become a person that I can no longer support. And I will always be like, I feel for the person she was, but now she's a person I no longer can support. But she's not there yet. She's a fair way off from there yet. Um, Rhaenyra was totally okay with random man in hallway dying as well. That is very telling of all of these characters. The fact that they are the wealthy. They would look at people like us and they would just think, I'm going to rule over you and you're going to deal with it. Um, but for Rhaenyra in this episode, I feel like... I, I mean, I like they clarified that she may not did try because I was really like, my guys, you just... I, I know neither of you are going to be having the best time in the, of your lives, but that is marriage in these days. <laughs> just have children that look like you. But the idea that they, they tried a couple times and it was just unbearable, and so then they just gave up. Um, it is really interesting to me because Rhaenyra almost would have been better off continuing to take birth control and just saying Aegon will be my heir you know like that would have been better off than having these children who I mean bless these children I hope the three of them live long happy and fulfilled lives but you know they're gonna have a struggle in their lives because of the fact that they are bastards um if she does have children with Damon will that child supplant those ones I mean Damon would want it to but regardless um you could definitely see that Rhaenyra found herself kind of stuck in the system of the world they live in, just like Alicent was. Um, but my biggest criticism of Rhaenyra has been that she views the crown as her right. And I don't mean that in the sense that how dare she, because, you know, she's the king's eldest child. I agree, it should be hers by right. But in Westeros, it just isn't hers by right. That is not the way Westeros works. So for her to kind of act like, well, yeah, I was named queen, they all swore to me, it's gonna be mine. And then do literally nothing to go about securing that. It's very short-sighted, very arrogant and assured of her own privilege, which of course she is. She is the crown princess of Westeros. Um, but I think in this episode, as more and more of these rumours swirl, as she begins to realise that there is a very legitimate threat to these children because everybody is saying it, she's starting to step up. She handled the scene, uh, that the night scene, very, very well. Um, allying herself with Damon is a very good move because Damon is a master player of the game and a master manipulator. He was... Damon was far happier just in his little library, just reading his books. <laughs> um, it worries me as well because I feel like there are people on both sides 
they were willing to go very very dark and it frightens me to death for Westeros. We know they make it through. I'm pretty sure it's Rhaenyra's heir that ends up on the throne. I don't know whether Rhaenyra herself does but I'm pretty sure Daenerys is a descendant of Rhaenyra um, but we will see. Everything is stressful. Everything is terrible in Westeros. At least Lainwall gets to be happy. I do feel for Corlys and Rhaenys because they lost both their children. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how this all shakes out, to see how all the different loyalties shake out and to see how long Viserys has left. Um, it doesn't seem like long to me and when he dies there will be civil war and there would have been unrest regardless because Westeros is not going to be cool with a woman queen until she proves herself um, and she could have been proving herself all these years so I don't know. Uh, my heart breaks for pilot Rhaenyra and pilot Alicent. They deserve better, just like the children here deserve better. I'm stressed about everything. A reminder that you can find the unedited version of this reaction on my Patreon. And thank you so much for watching.